Hey y'all and welcome back to Mulberry Ranch Farm. It's Ashley here with you again and today we're going to be talking about the importance of biosecurity panel testing your herd. So what biosecurity panel testing means is that you or your vet will draw blood from your goat and send that blood sample into the lab of your choosing or it may even be the local university that holds your agricultural extension for your state. They can do the testing on the big three. So what are the big three? The big three are CAE, CL, and Yoni's disease. And let me tell you what, all three of these diseases are nasty diseases. They all show their symptoms very slowly and sometimes not at all. Hence why it's really important to biosecurity panel your tests so that you get a little bit of a heads up when there might be a health issue in your goat herd. So why should you test your herd? The sweet and easy answer is it's kind of like a yearly checkup to make sure that your herd has a clean bill of health, is happy, and free of diseases. So when we say the big three, we're saying CAE, CL, and Yonis. But the scientific names for these, CAE is caprine, arthritis, encephalitis. Yoni's disease is paratuberculosis, and CL is Cassius lithendinitis. I think in order for people to understand why it's so important to test their herd is to actually know what these diseases are, how they're transmitted, how they present, how long it takes them to present, and to see how detrimental it can be to your herd. So when I start talking about biosecurity panel testing with new goat owners, sometimes it brings up a lot of confusion because we all start somewhere. We don't always start knowing everything. Some of us like to research a lot and some of us are pretty impulsive. And when it comes to the diseases that goats can carry and spread very quickly to your existing herd or neighboring herds, it gets a little scary. And it's really important to know your stuff when it comes to those big three. So there are three questions that I usually get when I start talking about biosecurity panel testing. The first one is who should be tested? The second one is, when should we test? And the third one is, are there any exceptions? So let's go ahead and answer those questions. So to answer the first question, who gets tested? Every goat in your herd above the age of six months should be tested for the big three. The second question, when should we test? The way I look at it, biosecurity panel testing should be on your annual checklist when it comes to health for your goat like CDT shots need to have a booster every year after they've had the initial two as a youngster. And question number three, are there any exceptions? My short and sweet answer for you is no. Just because some of these diseases, while your goats may stay on your property, birds, bugs, other animals do not. They could pick up a piece of contaminated material from one farm and take it to the other farm. And now that farm's been contaminated and their animals may pick up those diseases. So for me, and with a lot of research, no, there should be no exception. Any responsible livestock owner for whatever species it is that you're tending, you have a responsibility to make sure that your animals are happy and healthy so that your neighbor's animals can remain happy and healthy. And to really drive that fact home, I think it's really important that we go over the big three, CL, CAE, and Yoni's disease, and show why biosecurity panel testing is very important and necessary in every goat herd. And before we get into it, I cannot stress to you enough, all three of these diseases can very slowly progress and show very little symptoms before it is too late. And that's why we biosecurity panel test every year to try to catch things before they reach the point where they're unmanageable within our own herds. So first up, we have got CAE or caprine arthritis encephalitis. Now, this is a viral disease. It lives in the white blood cells of your goat. It has been likened unto AIDS in humans. So if an uninfected goat comes in contact with an infected goat's bodily fluids through AI, nursing, birth, anything like that, they can now be infected. And CAE is incurable. This is considered to be a callable disease. I know a lot of people have a lot of different feelings about calling members from their herd, but to each their own in their own herds. I know a lot of people that manage CAE, and I know some that won't allow it on their farm at all. Another really common transmission of CAE is by using the same needle on multiple goats. So if you're drawing blood or giving CDT shots, 
taking from one goat to the other is transmitting it from an infected animal to an uninfected animal. So it's really important to be very hygienic when it comes to using needles between your animals. CAE, while it can affect the joints, also can present through mastitis, pneumonia, weight loss, and occasionally it can present through paralysis in goats that are as young as two to six months old. The next on the list is yonis or paratuberculosis. This is a microbacterium that is transmitted from fecal to mouth. So that means that this bacteria actually lives in the inner linings of your goat's gut and is shed periodically throughout time through their feces. And we all know how goats like to nibble around and tasting, especially the young goats, the kids. And usually the kids are more likely to pick up yonis than an adult goat. The only bad thing about yonis is usually by the time the goat starts to show symptoms, it's too late. They've been shedding the bacteria probably for years and the entire herd can be infected. Another scary thing about yonis disease is that that bacteria, once shedded into your soil, can live for up to a year or more. It's fire resistant, chemical resistant, so bleaching or using um, antimicrobial bacteria solutions is not going to work. It is one of those things you have to just let it run its course. And I have seen many herds that manage this by taking uninfected goats or young kids at birth and making sure they're kept on soil or grounds where no goats that are carriers have been present before. But this can be kind of tough for us smaller breeders where we don't have as much acreage or we don't have multiple barns. Another reason why it's really important to test your goats every year for these diseases. The one thing I will say about Yoni's disease is that even through a blood test, it's only about 50 to 85% accurate depending on the type of blood test that's being used. The only 100% accurate way to test for Yoni's is through a fecal culture that can take up to six weeks. And even though those blood tests aren't 100% accurate, they give you a heads up. They give you a running head start to start managing the problem within your herd. And especially with diseases like this, a year's worth of time helps a whole lot. Goats poop a lot in a year. That's a lot of contamination into your soil. It's really cutting down the resources you can do to manage yonis. Yonis is also considered to be a cullable disease. This is probably my least favorite when I see it pop up or if I have seen anybody deal with it. It seems like it's the most labor intensive when it comes to herd management after it's in your herd. Yonis also doesn't tend to show up in young animals. It tends to show up in older animals. Anywhere from two to four years is when it usually shows up. It can even show up in much later years, but that goat's probably been shedding that bacteria for just as long. So how does Yonis present? Yonis is a lot like chronic wasting disease within the deer populations here in the United States. So while your goat may appear to have a very healthy appetite, eat a whole lot, and even probably be spry, Yonis is shedding away the inner lining of their gut, which makes it to where they can't hold weight. And they basically just deteriorate to skin and bones and die. And that's no way to go. And along with the rapid weight loss, you might find that they're weak and anemic and have a rough coat. Which for new goat owners or even some more seasoned goat owners are usually the warning signs for a heavy parasite load. In which case you might take your fecal to the veterinarian, which you should be doing if you're trying to test for um, worm loads and figure out what you should actually be treating for. But when your vet runs a fecal, they're gonna be looking for an egg count and not doing a fecal culture for yonis. So that's one of those times where it presents like something else, but can be a lot more sinister and could have been caught and managed had there been blood testing for biosecurity. Next is CL or Cassius lipidinitis. Spelling that here because that's the one I have a really hard time pronouncing. But this is also a bacterial disease. So what happens is this bacteria is actually transmitted through infected pus. So flies like pus, birds like pus. This is one of those that also can be transferred from farm to farm without those goats really even coming in contact with one another. That's why it's really important to manage your herds and draw the blood and get these tests run so that you save yourself some heartache and your neighbor possibly. Now CL is probably the most manageable of the three and there's actually a vaccine for CL, so it's curable. The only negative thing about giving that vaccine is that your goat will now test positive going forward. The reason I find CL to be probably one of the more interesting of the three is that once this bacteria is present in the goat, the goat's body figures out that that bacteria is there and it shouldn't be there. 
So it will navigate that bacteria up into the lymph nodes and create an abscess, which is a large quantity of white blood cells to try to isolate the bacteria and remove it, which I think is really cool. CL does present internally and externally. Now, externally is when it's in the lymph nodes. You'll see that your goat may have an abscess. If that happens and you're unsure or you haven't tested for CL, go ahead and have your vet come out and take a sample of that pus and test specifically for CL. When you do lance these different abscesses that are on the lymph nodes outside, make sure you're doing it away from your herd. Now, the more nasty form of CL is when it presents internally. When CL presents internally, the symptoms can vary because it kind of depends where the abscesses pop up on the inside of the body. If they're popping up in or around the lungs, then your goat may cough a lot or have respiratory issues or find it really difficult to breathe. If it's along their digestive system, you might see rapid weight loss, anemia, or your goat might just have a really rough looking coat in anemia, which a lot of new goat owners will just think is a heavy worm load but it could be something a lot more sinister and that's why it's important to blood test your goats. These are considered cullable diseases, which means that these goats are removed and are no longer sold onto another farm to propagate the disease. They are probably humanely euthanized and removed from the herd where they can start a herd management program to control any contamination or exposure within the herd. So what are some of the things outside of biosecurity panel testing that you can do as a responsible goat owner to make sure that these diseases never rear their ugly heads on your farms? There are a couple of different things, but first and foremost, you should be biosecurity panel testing your animals above the age of six months every single year. No questions asked. So the big no-no I see when it comes to biosecurity within people's barns are sale barns, are the auction houses for livestock. There are reasons sometimes that those animals make their way to a sale barn or a livestock auction and really you kind of get what you pay for. Not to mention you're in an enclosed area walking around on dirt where other livestock men have been walking probably with boots that they've worn in their barns. So while you might not even buy an animal, you now have contamination on your boots. You're bringing things home on the soles of your feet. So it's just better to stay away from livestock auctions altogether. And if you do for some reason go to a livestock auction, before you step foot in your barn, at the very least, please take off your boots, rinse them with a diluted water bleach mixture to make sure you're not bringing anything in, or better yet, just get rid of those boots. I really recommend that if you're going to be building up your herd, whether it's for showing, milking, meat production, or even pet quality, make sure you're buying from reputable breeders. Reputable breeders probably already have a biosecurity panel testing procedure in place that they take part in every single year to ensure that they have happy and healthy animals. And most reputable breeders are very excited to provide you with those tests. So it's okay to ask them to see this year's test along with maybe a couple of other years because like you've seen in our explanation with some of these other diseases, they present slowly over time. So if you can get two to three tests, you get a pretty good picture as to the quality of health on that farm. Now, if you get a reputable breeder that claims to have a clean tested herd, but will not supply you with the appropriate documentation for the test results, please do not buy from them. There's something going on there. <laughs> That should be a really big red flag and save yourself some heartache along with the health of your animals and stay away from a breeder that claims to be clean tested but will not give you any of the documentation to support that claim. Another way to help prevent your herd from coming in contact with these diseases is to have a closed herd. Once you've acquired all the goats that you may be wanting, stop acquiring goats. Close your herd. That's what a closed herd is. So what happens when we actually do need to bring in new bloodlines because we can only use the same bucks for so long or even the same does. So when that does happen and you have a closed herd, make sure that you're purchasing your animals from a reputable breeder that does biosecurity panel testing, will give you the tests and do your due diligence in quarantining your animal. This is important anyways, just because it's stressful coming from one farm to the other. And that stress sometimes shows you underlying health conditions. And it's a lot easier to treat one goat for 30 to 60 days than your entire herd. Because those goats, aside from biosecurity issues, may bring in parasites, 
other types of sicknesses that we'd rather just keep it to them and not the rest of the herd. And last but certainly not least, it's a good idea to try to cut down on traffic from visitors into your barn, stalls, or your pastures. If someone insists to come in and see your facilities, if you're a breeder or you're selling livestock, then it's always a good practice to have the plastic booties on hand so that they can slip those over their boots so that they're not contaminating your fields or your stalls with whatever might be on the bottom of their shoes. I know it might seem kind of weird and some people might think that's a a little much to ask, but it's really not for the safety of your goat herd. I think that's gonna do it for us today, guys. I hope that you pulled some information away from why you need to be biosecurity panel testing your goats on a yearly basis and a better understanding of the big three, which is CL, CAE, and Yonis. If you had any questions about biosecurity panel testing practices, please go ahead and drop those down in the comments below. I will be linking a lot of different resources down in the description along with some of the labs that can do these different tests for you if you're interested in beginning biosecurity panel testing your goat herd. I hope you found yourself enjoying the video and found it helpful. If you want to commit to us, please think about subscribing and ringing that notification bell so that you won't miss out on anything that we've got going on here at Mulberry Branch Farm because we've got a lot of adventures starting here in the springtime and we cannot wait to bring you along with us. So until next time, guys, I hope you're being safe out there and being kind to one another. Bye.